because the aeration tank is rapid aeration is done by this water we have oxygen we are adding oxygen because what we are doing we are not doing the experiment in uh, the open air like this trickling filter system what we are talking about this place so this is the activated sludge so in this case what we are using we have to add water uh, add oxygen into this water and after adding this water as bubbles we have the setting tank in the setting tanks the sludge are settled down why we call them activated sludge because this sludge some of the sludge is retreated in this in the liquid portion of the sludge is retreated in this case why because the sludge contains bacteria and higher load of bacteria and this bacteria helps uh, to to decrease the, or, uh, the content of organic matter in the in the water again if we re use it. it it will pump again reuse in this direction and finally so it it helps to maintain the flow between this uh, this water treatment when uh, the pump pressure is really low so it's another importance of this activated sludge treatment of doing it and when we have two or three times we run this treatment and finally have a really low count of bacteria in them and, and the sludge is really worthless then we elude the sludge from it and we go to the anoxic sludge digestion and after digest digest this sludge is anoxic processes uh, we produce methane it burns the methane and finally we have a, we have the leftover of the sludge we, what we use as fertilizer or cattle feed okay so this is the last and tertiary treatment which is the removal of inorganic nutrients we have talked about removal of organic materials actually we have done many steps we have we have actually done uh, the first step to separate the physical strong particles like solid materials from the water we have done the second treat secondary treatment to removal of the organic matter uh, and the third treatment or the tertiary treatment is removal of inorganic nutrients normally in this inorganic treatment uh, removal inorganic removal of uh, of uh, different inorganic particles we do not use microorganisms we use some of the chemicals to do that normally we use ferric chloride for example and uh, those ferric chlorides help different uh, particles of uh, in in this uh, in the different ionic particles to coagulate with each other and when finally settling settle down most treatment facilitators carry out by primary and secondary treatment but this is the last treatment you can say we can release of nitrate and the phosphate because this phosphate and nitrates are really bad for our health so use this by the eutrophication of receiving water bodies and also we have physical chemical process like precipitation using fecl3 what i have discussed just <laughs> is a very bad fcl3 structure uh, we, we can use filtration it is not normally used as uh, always because in univer in a large scale we do not we cannot use this filtration which is, is which is really tough which is really expensive and we can use the chlorination which we normally use to bleach our uh, at the final stages of that when you remove all these things we, we add chlorine the chlorination will kill all the all the remaining uh, germs and inorganic parts uh, in the water and finally we have purified the water and the water is ready for resupplying into our house again if we have any leakage in all this uh, system and then you have a problem that's why in the final stages of our this purification of water we finally purify uh, this water if we are talking about any drinking purposes for this water if we want to digest this water if we want to drink the water we need to have another final stages of purification what we can do uh, we can actually remove this uh, remove uh, to by this chlorination process or sometimes we use oz ozonization to do that in some places but those are uh, really really high costly so what do you what do you mean by potable water or pure water which is safe for human consumption that that is called the potable water and potable water means it do not have any pathogens it do not shows any turbidity uh, for example when a uh, water says uh, shows turbidity when uh, we have a lipid in the water and a lipid is digested it shows turbidity so we do not have to have any turbidity because we have to remove all those turbid materials or lipid materials from the water it tastes good and odors good uh, the, it, it do not have any odor actually it's odorless water have to be the normal or potable water have to be the odorless one and sometimes we use some of the flavorings for water uh, purposes in in some uh, say some works working areas and sometimes we can find the chlorine uh, the 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 smell of chlorine because sometimes they use a uh, lots of uh, chlorine to treat that water in some those cases but again chlorine is also bad it is it's a killer it's a killer for microorganisms so it's also bad so higher use of uh, chlorine or uh, using higher amount of chlorine for water treatment is is not good for us okay and if we have if we have done all these things these things and finally we can produce the drinking water okay so what is achieved in the water treatment plants that feed finished water to consumers through distribution system in this distribution system we we'll go through several steps like chlorination and all these steps to finally yield a good water good water for our health consumption but if we have any leakage in all this water treatment process we can have diseases and those diseases can uh, make us really sick and uh, we have those diseases we can talk about the diseases like shigella 
Sigillosis, Giardiasis, uh, Gastroenteritis and uh, Cholera, Typhoid and all these diseases to go all through that. That's why I need to go through this, this different sets of purification of what we can have in our normal water system final to have a distribution after the sewage treatment. So we have sewage treatment parts come here, we have go through the removal of uh, the gravels and the particles, then you have coagulation of doing this, then you have a filtration process and the filtration is a major process of the normal water treatment. So what is the di differentiation between the water treatment and sewage treatment of the, or the industry? Normally sewage treatment is used for industrial water treatment and the outcome of the sewage treatment the, and the water which is released after the sewage treatment is normally go to our, not our human consumption, it goes to for, for our normal day-to-day -day life purposes. But what we use uh, in, in, in this uh, to have a consumption of water, to have a drinking water purposes, go to another set of purification like this filtration and the final chlorination and storage and then you have different storage areas, uh, different tanks, we store the water and finally we have the distribution of water. So this is uh, a process. We have discussed about all these coagulation steps and all these steps. So these are the physical steps to go on for the water purification steps. Okay, so if we have any leakage of this purification system, we can have, we can cause these diseases like shigellosis, giardiosis, and all diseases control or take a toll of our gastrointestinal tracts because this disease we need to have this water, and finally the water is not digested in any part; it goes throughout the large intestine, and finally it is obs it is uh, it is uh, what you can say absorbed by our large intestinal uh, epithelial cells. And if we have any problem there, it will create problem. It will ends up with a problem with our uh, normal. Uh, schemes and it will cause diarrhea in most of the purposes and abdominal cramps, uh, cramps and all these different purposes and it will lose lots of water from your body. And water is, as it is an important source of our day to day life, important source that we need to carry on our life uh, in all the time. That's why if any problem, any leakage of this water purification system remains, if any of this pathogenic bacteria remains in water, uh, including this Escherichia coli uh, O5157 H7 strain, which is a pathogenic one, uh, it will cause diseases to us. Okay, and in fact, uh, it, it will be really, really dangerous for us to consume something we, we, we daily. We need to have in every aspect it, if it is contaminated. So that's so I need to have a little more, more careful about that. Okay, let's talk about the waterborne infections that can take a toll on human uh, nature. It, these diseases are uh, waterborne diseases. That means the water uh, contains the causative agents of those diseases. And water, if we have a lack in those purification steps of water, in the sewage treatments of water, in water purification system, if we have any leakage of those purification system, then these kinds of bacteria, this kind of pathogen, can take a toll on it and can can uh, can be very very dangerous for us to cause different diseases. So if we if if we look at the outbreaks and the cases of disease in, in United States from 1997 to 1998, so it is under one year, we can find this crypto. Uh, cryptopodidosis is uh, is the most uh, uh, is causing the most of the cases. We have many cases with this cryptopodidosis, but the outbreaks is the maximum in case of acute gastrointestinal illnesses. And these acute gastrointestinal illnesses are caused by many different uh, species or genera of bacteria. It may be amoeba, it may be Escherichia coli, this strain of Escherichia coli which causes gastroenteritis. They, we can see these outbreaks many times, and it is dangerous because uh, when these outbreaks occurs, and you find this Escherichia coli. One one o one fifty seven strain in our gut, then we cannot possibly distinguish between our normal E. coli and this E. coli. That can be dangerous. Shigellosis can be caused by Shigella. Uh, this is normal bacteria. It causes toxin, a Shigella toxin that can cause our severe diseases. And most of these diseases are having a in, a, a, are, in, are incorporated with the gastrointestinal tract. So it damages the lining of our gastrointestinal tract. It it uh, causes it releases some toxins that 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 breaks down the tissue layers in those gastrointestinal tract. That's a possible problem for us. And also it uh, it uh, leads to the formation of abdominal cramp and the blood loss and and the water loss from the body as we as an example of the cholera, which is a master of water loss diseases. In this case, it is transmitted through raw water when the water is contaminated with Vibrio cholerae. This is a bacteria which causes this disease. And this cholera disease, what they are doing, they are using a toxin. This Vibrio cholerae is releasing a toxin, which is uh, which is an intertoxin. It is an enterotoxin. It is a part of exotoxin, which is secreted by cholera cells. When this toxin is secreted, this toxin is, is triggers the release of water from our uh, intestinal cell into the intestinal lumen. As a result of it, we lose a mass of mass amount of water because it it changes the salt concentration in both the sides. Uh, 
For example, you can look at this cholera disease. This cholera disease, again, the pathogenesis is by the release of this enterotoxin, which produces in small intestine and causes the diarrhea. Diarrhea means the massive loss of water from the cell. Why? Because if we talk about if we have intestinal cell, uh, intestinal lining, for example, in this intestinal cell, we have this intestinal cell lining, and this is the lumen of our intestine. And what is going on actually, the cell is actually doing uh, the, the salt concentration or making the change in salt concentration, uh, uh, changing the osmolarity for for example if we create a higher salt concentration in this lumen uh, the higher salt concentration in this lumen it, it releases higher salt concentration in this lumen and then all the cells uh, salt uh, transporters are opened up and the sodium ions are released from the cell into this lumen and chlorine ions is also released from the cell to lumen as a result of it we have a higher salt concentration in the gut lumen and have a lower salt concentration in the cell that's what is going on uh, to, to cope up with that the water molecules come outside the cell uh, from this lumen portion so what we're doing we're dried out all the cells of intestinal lining is dried out uh, by the release of water from them, and that is called the diarrhea because and this uh, and we have a huge amount of water in the gut. That's why uh, if you can take two stool and the stool is filled with uh, this watery parts, and uh, we call sometimes white is uh, white is we can say this uh, this. What you can a mucus uh, containing part uh, sometimes it is called the rice water stool syndrome and in these cases what we have a massive loss of water so that's why we need a lot of salt concentration salt uh, salt containing water solution to it we call it the ORS or oral rehydration solution to take in these situations in India this uh, Vibrio cholera outbreak is really really severe in many many regions where we do not have proper hygienic systems proper sanitation and all this and that's why the proper sanitation proper hygienic system is important in all these cases the cholera is uh, dangerous in most of the time in Africa uh, Southeast Asia and uh, we are among all those parts so it, it's a defect of us that we cannot um, go against this cholera because of this proper in hygiene because in India we have a high huge population so if you're talking about huge population we do not have ex access to proper hygienic uh, toilets and all these things so that that can cause diseases so we have to be a little bit more careful about all these things to act actually have a hygienic toilet at least uh, to go against this kind of diseases which can be prevented if we are a little bit more concerned about them like cholera it kills many people in every years okay so and the second thing is a typhoid fever and this fever is uh, is attached with uh, with our different diarrheal diseases this this causes fever because it's enteric and it rises the heat uh, this bacteria it's caused by salmonella type it is also found in water it causes diarrhea it can be transmitted by contaminated food direct contact and also drinking water is also a source of its uh, the transmission and also we have some viruses that uh, can cause this typhoid fever and we have some viruses that is dangerous for this purpose like polio and hepatitis A is also related with our gastrointestinal problems and in this typhoid fever what you have you have a high heat temperature uh, and fever and also you have abdominal cramps severe cramp and you have a blood uh, can be released with your stool so this is a really dangerous uh, scheme of all this time because you have attacked with both direction with, with fever and uh, the problem of your tummy and amoeba also a small protozoa that can cause diseases amoebiosis is a, is a result of disease or giardia can also cause a disease it's called the giardia season all these diseases are cause the same types of disease that you find in all those situations because these are entamoeba histolytic is also another uh, another potent po protozoa that can cause dysentery dysentery means we have, we have, an, uh, we have the blood uh, bloody stool and also have abdominal cramp and we have we have fever uh, in a little bit amount, so the, this is called a dysentery disease. And most of the entamoeba in the histolytic are anaerobic, or that means they have no, they do not go against, the, go with the mitochondrial respiration scheme. They go with a normal glycolysis and then fermentation scheme. Normally, they use uh, they uh, enter our cell as cysts, small spores via the food and uh, contaminated water. After that, it influences, and finally, they cause diarrhea, inflammation, and fever. Okay, we can find these cases again in uh, in Africa and India in most of the uh, most of the times so worldwide. It kills almost one lakh death a year. So this is really really dangerous. We, we have to go against this amoebiosis to, to prevent that because in this case these uh, these spores or these seeds are really powerful. That sometimes if we if we if we uh, heat the water or uh, if we drink water after heating, they still they can remain uh, intact as the seeds that the spores. Then then finally they they come into their normal vegetative cell, vegetative state like that, and they can grow and divide and can cause diseases in us. 
So uh, another last thing I'm going to talk about is some viruses that cause diseases. Uh, it is a rota virus which causes diseases in children most of the time. It causes gastroenteritis. In in India, there are many child die in 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 a few weeks after their birth in many regions, many many villages because of this rota virus, and they do not know actually uh, the 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 actual they do not know about rota viruses and viruses at all. They, uh, that's why it's also important to to learn them about the actual diseases and human bodies. System, the basics of uh, it to prevent the diseases. At least they can took the necessary steps. So they actually many times cannot take the necessary step and go against some. So they can say, uh, take some wrong step that that will, uh, that uh, is not at all preventing rotavirus, but also can inspire rotavirus to attack. So these are very very bad conditions. And again, the improper hygiene and improper sanitation can cause diseases so we have to have a little bit more careful about all the sanitation system a sanitary system to go against the diseases caused by waterborne infections and we have hepatitis a which called the liver infection uh, inflammation and necrosis of the liver which can be really transmitted by the water and we have different different worms that can cause diseases but in this case we are looking at real viruses sometimes called diseases like and they got some enteroviruses that, that cause enteritis in us uh, and that cause upper respiratory tract diseases can uh, can lead to formation of our uh, nasal congestion and finally uh, death uh, for as a result of it but most of the most of uh, most important of them is the rotavirus because rotavirus cause many death in india and we have serious concern so all these thing uh, keep in your mind in something that you have to then i i mentioned to talk about you go have to we have to have proper sanitation system proper hygiene concept we have to be a little bit more careful ab about our body and we have to have a little bit more concerned about what we eat what we drink and the food and water source that we are using and uh, not only those people who are actually dealing with these diseases but the but the health officials have to be little more be a bit more careful the ngos and on the, all those free organization have to come cooperate together to go against these diseases like like this disease which can be can easily be uh, stopped easily easily be prevented if we are a little bit more concerned about our health and about our hygiene so keeping this thing in your mind it's our duty is the duty of our microbiologists and the students that 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 are watching this video it's your duty it's my duty to actually prevent all these things if we are looking at uh, all uh, to prevent this disease as our duty then that you can really eradicate this disease really fast because there is actually no eradication uh, term i don't want to use eradication term but disease is actually caused by uh, the the opportunity of uh, bringing those diseases because we are not following the proper hygiene system so we can be more little bit more concerned about our health then we can prevent this disease so that's it and i hope that's going to help you thank you